So in today's video, we are going to be basically upgrading the fans to a double fan system on the Nerd QX. The hope, I guess, is to basically get more efficiency or kind of life out of the chip with better overclocks. Now we've already made some adaptations. So these blue things are on, I think that that is the V regulator if you see it right there. So these three things are the V regulators. But I've seen a lot of people put their um, heat sinks on these bits here and those bits and those bits. But you guys can let me know in the comments. In the previous video, we tested the efficiency of this. It wasn't that good in terms of compared to something like the Bitaxe Gamma that we have here. So that's very dusty, but sure. The Bitaxe Gamma that we have here. So this is super efficient with this heat sink, which we've tested. We're going to test another one soon on the channel. But this has an upgrade for a different heat sink as well. So there was the aluminium one, which we'll show you now, which is this right here. So you have that. And then this copper one that you see beneath it is a slightly better one. And we've done a video kind of comparing them, but you can see the thickness of the copper one is way better than the aluminium one. Also, I don't know if this is adenized. Nobody has kind of let me know in the comments. I did ask, but if you could let me know in the comments if this is adenized, like this is copper, just changed color. I don't have a clue what it's actually called. So there is a better heat sink out there for this, and there's a hydro version as well, which we discussed in the last video. But it also allows double fans. So this came along with this, which originally went on top of that, like there. And I just thought we can use the double fan system just to either cool down the voltage regulator for higher overclocks or cool down the chip for higher overclocks. So a lot of different placements that we can go with where we want to put it. We can either do a, a back fan one, which I don't think is kind of optimal. So facing this way, but there's not really anything. There's, that's for the other side of the voltage regulator but that's the main heat point is right there. So I'm thinking it's gonna go basically right there and blow air down. The only problem is that these heat sink, the fins on them, they run that way. So if we are blowing heat down, it's only gonna hit the voltage regulator and this part of the heat sink as well. But it's a simple upgrade that we can try. We've done it with a lot of other miners as well out there. We've done it with the Gamma, I think the Supra and the Max version. We also tried this on the Canon Avalon, which a lot of people commented saying that's gonna do nothing, but it's just kind of trying to reverse engineer it a little bit. So before we get into how we're gonna do that, let's thank the sponsor of this video, Crypto Miner Bros. Since 2018, CryptoMinerBros.com has been the premier site for top tier crypto mining hardware, earning the trust of miners across the globe. The prices displayed on their site cover shipping and DDP straight to your doorstep, ensuring no unexpected costs at checkout. They deliver to over 100 countries and even provide lower invoicing options to help you cut down on customs fees. Payment is a breeze with options like direct bank transfer or cryptocurrencies including Bitcoin, USDT or Ethereum. With over 250 ASIC options, they stock some of the channel's favorites like the Bitax, the Bitax Touch, and the Avalon Nano 3S. Join tens of thousands of happy customers who rely on CryptoMinerBros.com for dependable hardware fulfillment, clear pricing, and a top-notch service. Check out CryptoMinerBros.com today, link in the description. So we are back with our trusty double fan splitter. Remember, somebody told me in the comments that PWM control PWM PMW it doesn't really matter but PWM control only spins at the speed that your other fan spins at does that make sense so with the Nocta fan that could only go up to I think 4500 rpm so the other fan would only spin up to that rpm it basically copies the rpm from here and puts it onto here now the reasoning for that is because it doesn't have the control right there on the second splitter. So this is going to be the main splitter that goes into there, that fan. And then the extra splitter is going to go into this fan that you see here like that. So 
that's the 4 1 and then this is the 4 1 left so we just take the fan out of here sorry this is a not a professional way to do it I wish there was something that could grab fans that are kind of stuck in there that's a bit of a design flaw I guess okay finally got it off of there I think I might have actually pulled one of the pins out if we look down there I'm not sure but we can always replace it with the other fan it doesn't really matter also question for anyone in the comments if they want to let me know what exactly does that other one do because we've tried plugging it into that one and that does nothing so if anyone wants to let me know in the comments what the other one above it does then please let me know unless you know because I was thinking if we just plug the other one into there that's going to give us two fan controls but it doesn't seem that way so maybe it's for another higher powered fan or something like that but there is two slots there so you should be able to plug in two fans like that however when we've tested it it's never really worked but that goes into there so down into there just make sure that's actually plugged in and then the ultimate one or the combined one goes down into there like this so one thing that I also want to note about this is that that is very close that's the reason we couldn't get it off is because that's very close and it's hard to pull that out but yeah so first thing we need to do is spin it up and then we'll kind of see what it's given us and we'll look at the placement that we want to go with and then we'll go from there test it see what it's like on the computer and see if we can get a little bit more hash rate out of it for the watts that we're kind of using or not really hash rate but better temperatures for the chip so let's actually plug it in now so we have that and this is kind of just the test so there we go two fans running side by side i guess those are just them running up so the placement i was thinking is going to be something like that but then i realized that the fan is actually in the way of that um can we can bend that out of the way but it doesn't really matter so we're going to work on some placement and figure out some placement for that and um, let's head over to the computer and start messing around with it see what temperatures we get so previously if we actually take the fan out we can test the temperature so we could unplug this right here test the temperature plug it back in and then we'll see what the temperature drop is mainly it's probably going to be on the vr and not on the chip because this heat sink below is very efficient so let's get on to doing that and let's get onto the computer okay so um we have right here everything set up so you should have two views of it right now because i'm recording both of them at the same time and this is the view that we have of the nerd qx i'm just going to move this across a little bit hopefully to get that there so we're going to test some different orientations right now um Let's actually stop spinning for a second then. Don't know why. Oh. I don't know why, but this does not spin if I put it like that. You can see it turns off. But I put it like that and it turns back on. That is very weird. Maybe there's a loose connection within the, the fans, but we're just going to have to kind of trick it to turn on. So the main thing that we want is to see kind of how the VR temperatures react and mainly what I can see so we're going to take the fan away that's the main thing that we're going to do we're going to take the fan away just place it down somewhere else and we're going to have a look at the ASIC chip temperatures and also the VR temperature that we're seeing right here so currently we are sitting at 47.4 and 63.4 or 63.5 in terms of the temperatures so because those temperatures are kind of like our baseline we want to see how far this is actually going to reduce the temperatures if we had it kind of in its own place so i'm just now thinking that because the fan turns off if you don't have it like this so i'm going to do a test so if we put it vertical is it going to turn off now weirdly enough when whenever i put it down it turns off 
Is that part of the design? I don't really know. That's a strange thing. I've never seen that happen before where you put a fan down and it turns off. So if anyone can let me know why that is happening, that would be great. Maybe there's a magnet in there that turns it off. So to actually do this setup, we'd need to put it like here. And we need to make sure that it stays on. So I just flicked the screen then, so that's great. But let's, for example, say that the fan was there. Then what is the temperature drop from there? It looks to be, on the VR temperature at least, very good. Now, another thing that we could do is also not use this fan, but also use a smaller Bitaxe fan. I would uh, recommend if we are going to actually try to cool down the chip, then we use this fan because it's way bigger. But even with the VR temperature, we can just use a small fan in there. I know you can't see it right now, but this is what we're working with. I'm just thinking now if we actually tip this and put it on its out, put it on its side, then potentially we could get this fan to spin up through there like this. So let's just rest it there. Okay, let's just rest it there. Hello. There we go. So chip temperature, as we're looking at it right now, 47.9. VR temperature is 61.4. VR temperature seems to be going down, but the chip temperature is actually going up because it's actually sitting on the bottom of this. So maybe if we just put it like that, why does it turn off? That's so annoying. There's got to be something wrong with this because that's turning off. Anyway, I'm going to resort to uh, option two, which is going to be plugging in the other one. So let's unplug this from here. So we unplug the fan. That's unplugged. And then we're going to use, I just realized that we can't use this because it's five volts. So there was no point unplugging that. So there has to be something in the fan. It definitely would work if we uh, could get it to actually run because I can already see on the computer the VR temperature is still dropping. Um, and it's coming back up now. But that would only be useful for actually overclocking it. Plus, I can't figure out why this keeps turning off. So if somebody can let me know in the comments why this keeps turning off, that would be great. Because I don't actually know why because this fan is at the same orientation like that face down. I don't know, maybe it's because I'm moving it about, that's the reason, but let's plug it in and give it another try. So it's running now. Let's just put it on top of there. Okay, let's not put it on top of there. Let's just hold it. We'll just hold it for now. See if the chip temperature starts to decrease. Clearly, you could just fin spin the fans higher for actually this one. Mainly what we do is we cool the VREG temperature. So I'd like to have it like that so it cools across the voltage regulator. Okay, so it seems to be just running now. Um, let's see, let's just up the fans and see kind of what we get. So settings here. Let's up it to that. Let's proceed anyway. So this video is kind of a fail, but it's an experiment. So nevertheless, we're going to upload it. A lot of people are saying like, why would you upload these sort of things? It's just kind of like back engineering, uh, giving you guys an insight of what I would personally do if you were looking at upgrading things like this. And it's content at the end of the day. Everyone wants to watch, you know, stuff about these type of miners and trying to get them to be the most efficient, better hash rate. The double fan upgrade that we do on the bit axis definitely is a good upgrade in terms of the voltage regulator because that is the real kind of cutoff point in terms of overclocking. Your voltage regulator is going to get way hotter, way quicker before you even hit the ASIC chip temperature. So even if your fans are at 100%, they might, and you're trying to overclock it, you might get up to maybe 65 degrees on the chip but the voltage regulator is at 120 and it's basically going to burn out at that point. So I don't know what speed we actually just set it to. I kind of forgot, but that looks to be working right there. 
and let's angle it around like that. So that's better. Kind of getting some airflow across the fins of the voltage regulator, even though they're running that way. They should be running that way, technically. But let's just let that run, and then we'll come back kind of in two minutes and see what we're looking at in terms of the chip temperature. Obviously, they're going to be cooled down because this is running quicker, but voltage regulator should be cooling down as well. Okay, so it's been about a minute, and you can see that the voltage regulator temperature is at 49. So definitely helping out with the voltage regulator. The chip doesn't really matter because this fan is spinning, but the fan speed is at 76 at 2000 RPM. So I'm going to just kind of end this video here. Uh, but you guys can let me know in the comments if you have any suggestions of what we could do. Obviously, my suggestion of using the mini fan that we see here, that was a good suggestion, but we don't have a 12 volt version of this. So if you want to see a 12 volt version of this, let me just stick it literally on top of the voltage regulators, then that could be a quick fix. And this is going to take less watts than that one, I believe. So yeah, let me know your thoughts in the comments. Obviously, we haven't really done anything in this video, but if you could like it and share it, then that'd be great. Make sure you like the video, subscribe, and I'll see you in the next one.